Einstein, as you know, was a very avid uh, amateur violinist. And um, uh, a lot of very famous professional musicians wanted to play with him, of course, because it was the great Einstein. And I, I suppose that they really were friends. And they would come down from New York, and they seemed to be mainly uh, RCA recording artists. Uh, Piotr Gorski, I think, Rubinstein, and, and so forth. Now, as I'm talking to you, it may have been that they were recording in Camden, which is not that far from Princeton, but whatever it was, I read somewhere that these artists would, would come down and play with him, and I think it was Rubinstein who yelled at him and said, you know, to him, can't you count? And he said, no, I can't, which is the difference between an arithmetician and a physicist, isn't it? Anyhow, so, uh, from all I'd read about Einstein, I read quite a lot at one stage, no one seemed to have seen his violin playing as being, or even his music, as being any more but a hobby. No one saw it, how it related to him as a person, particularly as it's something that mattered and something which he continued to play nearly to the end of his life. So obviously it had great significance to him. And, you know, for all I know, it's that when he was playing the violin, that's when he got all his muse messages. But it seemed to me to, to put him, to isolate it from the rest of his life seemed to be just ridiculous. So I tried to find any recordings of his playing. And uh, I contacted RCA, I got nowhere. It looked like, even though these recording artists, RCA, there, no technician even went along at his own time and just turned on a tape recorder. And I contacted the Hebrew University in, in, uh, in Israel, where his archive, one of his archives is, and uh, they searched, they said, oh, what a wonderful idea. They searched and searched, they found nothing. And there's another huge repository of his material, I'm just going back from memory, something like the American Physics Association or something like that. And they said, what a great idea. They looked and looked, they found nothing. And then someone said to me, the thing you should do is talk to his secretary, whose name I think is, was Helen Dukas, I think it was D-U-K-A-S. And so, uh, who was very old at the time, they said she knew everything about it. So I called up to talk with her and I was given an appointment about a week, I think it was about 9.30 or something in the morning, uh, to call up to, to talk to her. And she died the day that I was supposed to call. Uh, not because I called, but just I was going to call. But, um, and, and, and I thought, so obviously his music making was not meant if it, to ever be recorded or somehow put into public knowledge. So, and, and it leads into the, the, the question of why did no one think it was important? Because th they're always trying to isolate the uh, professional uh, entity, that part of the individual, from the rest of him. As if it's nothing, it's just nothing to do with it. And it's always trying to, uh, uh, part of it was isolate the psychology of the individual from what he does as well. You know, the fact that Einstein uh, had, you know, terrible marriage, had a, had a uh, uh, very disturbing thing, schizophrenic son who spent his life in the Buchholze in, in, uh, in Zurich. In fact, he, he wrote, I think it was to Freud, and he said, I greatly envy you because you've been able to have a happy marriage and been able to have a, a, you know, an ongoing relationship, a love relationship with a woman, which uh, he was never able to do. Now again, I think that's all part, that's all part of E equals MC squared. You know, it, it's, you can't uh, separate. I used to think, always, I stopped reading the Times Literary Supplement, I used to get it for years. What really turned me off in the end is every time there was any psychological or psychonic, God forbid, writing about somebody, say a, a writer or whoever it may be, 
you always knew the, the attack that the reviewer, in those days unnamed, but always, always, always a left brain university professor, would make against it. Because they're always trying to isolate the, the, the deed, the, the thought, the creation from the individual, as if it's come from some other place. Which of course is exactly how the reviewer would like to be thought about him. That, that his reviews are nothing to do with him as a person. So you could hate the reviews but love him and vice versa and so forth. And of course it's all the, the, the total person. And I think, uh, I, I think the world missed out a lot on, on not uh, hearing Einstein um, and not hearing Sherlock Holmes play the violin either, you know? <laughs> Think about that because it's always thought to be part of his creativity, wasn't it? You know? But um, it's always this ongoing attempt to separate the, the deed, the, the act from, from the person, as if it's a, a, a different thing to be looked at separately. And I think if we'd have really heard him play, I think we'd. I, I'll never understand E equals MC squared, but I may have understood, you know, uh, e, e for Einstein equals Mozart squared. <laughs> I would have had a, Mozart was apparently was his favourite composer. I would have, would have learned something more about the man, would have known him better, would have known the wellspring from which it all came. So, and maybe there are tapes, you see, maybe there are somewhere. I've tried the Princeton Library and so forth, but if any of you want to try again, you may be luckier than I was. I can't believe that nobody ever recorded. You can't isolate one part of the, of the individual from the totality, because everything he does is part of the totality. Whether it's Einstein, you know, being unable to really love a woman, or Einstein, E equals M C squared, whatever, it's, it's one person. And, and somehow or other, if we, we would understand his thought processes, not just him as a person, which is I think important because he was such an important person, but we would understand his thought processes, his reasoning better, if we heard him play. We'd, we'd know him better. And he was a man who I think is worth knowing. It's funny, you know, he, he, he wrote, uh, there's, there's a book, I don't know if it was his title, the, the World As I See It. I don't know whether he, it's a, it's a collection of essays he wrote and various things. I don't know whether he actually put that title on the book or his publisher, but you know, you have the world as I, as I see it, or you could say it's, it's the music as I play it. And it would be the same thing.